Multiplexing and demultiplexing, or muxing and demuxing for short, they are a type of combinational logic. Logic as in high and low, one and zero, true and false. And combinational, meaning there are combinations of inputs and outputs. If you have these inputs, you get these outputs every time. If you have those inputs, you get those outputs every time. There's no state, there's no memory, there's no order of operations, it's just certain inputs equal certain outputs. Now fundamentally, muxing and demuxing are exactly the same thing, it's just different combinations, different ways to wire up the chip. But conceptually, muxing and demuxing are the reverse operation of each other. If you have something that's muxed, you can demux it. If you have something that's demuxed, you can mux it. So conceptually, they're still separate, even though it's just wiring at the end of the day. Generally speaking, muxing is when you have more inputs than outputs, where you're taking those inputs and you're selecting among them to decide which of the inputs is the output. And demuxing is the reverse, where you have a small number of inputs and a larger number of outputs, and you select which of the outputs gets the inputs. If you have a parallel to serial operation, let's say you have four wires that are in a port, like a four pin port, well, four data pins. You could have, you know, one, zero, zero, one, on the four wires, and then you want to make a serial stream out of it, so it becomes 1001, one bit at a time. This would be muxing, where you take more inputs into one output, and then demuxing would be the reverse. You would have the serial stream, and then you could take that small number of inputs and distribute it, one at a time, for example, amongst those outputs, to go from serial to parallel. Another example is a multimedia file on your computer, like mp4, webm, QuickTime, AVI, hopefully you've seen at least one of these. You've got video, you've got audio, you may have other stuff like subtitles, and they're all wrapped up in here. You've got the video, audio, and other stuff in the file. These are the muxed forms, these are called containers. When you create one of these files, you have the video from the camera, the audio from the microphone, subtitles from a file, whatever, and you mux them, you have all those inputs, and you compress them down to one output, which is this file. And then, when you play that file on your computer, your video player demuxes it. It decodes these container formats, and it pulls out the video to show in a window, and it pulls out the audio to send to the speaker, pulls out the subtitles to draw on the bottom, whatever. That's another type of muxing and demuxing. So muxing, you can kind of think of as wrapping up inputs in a more compact form, and demuxing is spreading them out again. A mux or demux chip is going to have a certain number of input lines, a certain number of output lines, and a certain number of select lines. If you have a mux chip, you're probably going to have more inputs than outputs. And if you have a demux chip, you're probably going to have more outputs than inputs. So like for muxing, you'd have your parallel on this side, however many inputs, and serial on this side, one output. And then demuxing, serial to parallel, would be one input and however many outputs. Now what are select lines? First of all, select lines will always be high or low. They are inputs. Select lines are another kind of input. This is your data input. Select lines are your control input. They'll always be high or low. So you can think of them as a binary number. You know, positional notation, base two number. So if you have one select line, that's two to the one equals two different select modes. We could call it zero to one. If you had five select lines, they're each one bit, basically, so that's five bits, two to the five equals 32. So five select lines, each one can be high or low, is 32 combinations. So you could have zero through 31, for example, 32 different select modes. Think of select in the context of a physical switch. Think of a mux or demux chip like a physical switch. You might have a slider, like an on-off switch, or a rocker, or a rotary dial, whatever. It's a physical switch, and it's going to have a certain number of positions, like an on-off switch would have two positions. Maybe you have a volume knob, and then you've got the lowest one is mute or off or minimal volume, the highest one is maximum volume, and then you've got 30 different volumes between that, so 32 different little notches it can be on. That's what your select is. So you have a physical switch, and the switch is going to have contact points. 
Electrical contact points, you wire them up however. And then you have your little knob or switch or whatever that you can slide to different positions. So the inputs and the outputs are your contact points and you can wire them up however. On a chip, of course, inputs and outputs can't be switched randomly because transistors don't work that way. But, you know, just say that, you know, here are the inputs and here are the outputs. And then whichever position your switch is in determines based on how the switch is built. Whatever position it's in, different ones of these contacts are going to be wired up differently. So if the switch is in the top position, maybe these two are connected in the middle, in the bottom, however the switch works. The position of the switch determines what contact points are connected to what other contact points. That's exactly how MUX and DMUX chips work. The select lines are the positions of the switch, the inputs and outputs are wired up, and then internally, whatever select mode you're in, certain inputs are going to be connected to certain outputs. It's a really good analogy, I think, the physical switch. So like I said, fundamentally, muxing and demuxing in chip form, it's just different mappings, different numbers of inputs and outputs, so it's not anything different. But conceptually, let's treat muxing and demuxing separately. So let's say we have our chip. Let's say we have two inputs, one output, and one select line. Let's call this input zero, input one, output zero, and select zero. That looks like a 50. That's a little better. So this is probably the simplest kind of mux you're gonna get. More inputs than outputs. It's basically an on-off switch. So we have one select line, so we know we have two different possibilities for select. Let's say we've got select can be zero or one, the two different values of select. So I'll call it a truth table, but it's really a mapping table, output table, whatever. But uh, output zero. The select determines what output zero is connected to. So we could have input zero for that and input one for that. So when select is low, input zero, whether it's high or low, is going to be replicated at output zero. Input one is going to be ignored. It's going to do nothing. And if select is high, so a one, then input one is going to be connected to output zero, and input zero is going to be ignored. So we're selecting how we go from inputs to outputs. So what happens if I add two more inputs? Well now we've got four different inputs going to one output, but we still have only two possibilities for select, which means you know, two of these are going to be ignored. There's no way to select one of these four, but we can add a select line. So now two to the two is four. We have four different values, zero, one, two, or three. So depending on what the select lines are, we could have input zero, input one, input two, or input three on output zero. And the parallel to serial example, let's say we have our parallel port has four data pins. Our serial port has one data pin. So we could have a certain frequency. So select goes zero, one, two, three, zero, one, two, three, with a certain frequency, like our baud rate, for example, how fast do we send the bits? And so it'll send zero, one, two, three, zero, one, two, three, one after the other. So that's how parallel to serial would work. But what happens if we do this? What happens if I add another output? Well, anything we want. Once again, it can be however the chip manufacturer decides. Now, you're only going to see so many chips, you know, for common operations. You're not going to see literally every possible chip. They're going to make the ones that people want to buy in large quantities. But of course, if you're using your own logic gates, combined chips, just use regular transistors, you can obviously make your own muxing circuitry work however you want it to work. Or you can use a microcontroller and just have it done in software or an FPGA or something. But you can make your own muxing circuitry. But anyway, this is still a common arrangement. But how might it work? Well, we still have four values of select. Let's say if select is zero, then these two are connected. Maybe if select is one, then these two. If select is two, it could be these two. And select is three, it could be these two. Or another way, maybe select zero is these two. Select one is these two. Select two is these two. And select three is these two. It'll just be on the data sheet how it works. That's all this is. That's all muxing is. That's really all there is to explain. If you go deeper into the explanation of muxing, you're not really explaining circuitry. This is the circuitry. You've got inputs and outputs. They're wired up however, and your select decides which wiring you're using at the present moment. That's it. More complex discussions of muxing and demuxing just talk about the applications actually using this to do useful work. And I think that you shouldn't bog down the explanation with any of that. I want you to understand 
the mechanicals, what's going on physically, and then in other videos I can go into making parallel and serial converters or whatever. But fundamentally understand, you've just got inputs and outputs, a certain number of modes that they can be in. Different modes connect different inputs to different outputs. That's it. That's literally it. Demuxing is the opposite. Demuxing would be you've got one input, two outputs, and one select. If you have select zero, then this input might go to the first output. Select one, this input might go to the second output, and the other output would probably be high impedance. Depending on the chip, it could be low, it could be high impedance. Generally speaking, your input lines can be high, low, or don't care. So a high is going to be on an output, a low is going to be on an output, or the input is ignored because, you know, like when we had two inputs and one output, it would select which input. So that could be ignored in one select form. An output can be high, low, or high impedance, depending on the chip. The chip might just have high and low outputs. The chip might have high impedance also. So hopefully one final example is going to make this clear. Let's say you have a chip with two inputs and one output and one select line. Let's say that's your MUX chip. Then you have a DMUX chip that has one to two and then one select line. The output of the first chip is to the input of the second chip. The select lines are shorted together and they're only given one signal. Input, input, output, output, and then select. This is almost a no operation. Input zero, let's say select the zero. Input zero, is on the output, which is in the input, which is being distributed to output zero. So input zero and output zero would be the same. And the only difference is input one here is something, and output one is probably high impedance. If select is one, then input one is to the output, to the input going to output one. I'm trying to emphasize how this fundamentally is just reverse operations of each other, except a piece at a time. You may be familiar with the term mapping. It's common in mathematics. I forget what the branch of math is, but you'll hear about mapping a lot. Set theory it might be, but it's just which inputs go to which outputs. But just try to not overcomplicate it. Just think of a MUX and DMUX chip as a physical switch. It's almost a perfect analogy, but that'll do for now. So I'll be seeing you.